Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now in terms of production value, it's 11 o'clock at night, I've got a glass of wine, it's dark, I'm wearing sunglasses. Let's hit it. <laughs> please tell me you got that reference, please. Don't make me feel extra old. <laughs> but this is regarding the updates for Haggis Tools, and it's mainly for the people who have bought it, or potential buyers. Now these updates will actually roll out on Friday afternoon. I'm actually waiting on Blender Market getting back to me. They're a bit slow when you're creating a shop, so hey, sell a wee. But some of the new tools that I've implemented in the Haggis tools are pretty damn impressive. I do have to say so myself. I don't like blowing smoke up my own arse, but some are pretty good. And I'm hoping you actually get your £5 worth of value here. So let me show you some of these tools. Now, my favourite is, let's say we select both objects here. You can go to duplicate and join. And this will essentially do what you think it's going to do. It'll duplicate the objects and join them together. So it makes it one whole object. And nice and fast. I use this in production quite a lot. So let me show you some of the animation tools. It is an animation package after all. So we always had copy paste location rotation skill. But now we can copy paste and then keyframe. And I noticed a lot of users that were copy and pasting and then it would jump. So now this will automatically keyframe it for you nice and easy. So let's say for example, we just want to copy a location here. We can copy it. We can select the object and we can go down to paste location and keyframe not automatically insert a keyframe. So we have this really amazing animation. So let's say for example, we actually want to copy the animation data of this object. What we can do is we can select the object that we would like to copy, select the target object, and we now have a new option called copy animation single user. So what this essentially does is it copies the animation or a link data and then quickly makes it a single user. So we can copy animation and I'll bring up a menu just to make sure. Now I can take this menu off so it automatically does it, but I don't want to mess about with linking objects and stuff like this just in case. And you can see here we've copied the animation. And because it makes it a single user, we can then animate these separately. Perfect. So let me show you another very quick tool. So let's say for example, we drop a material onto this and we just make it something like red. So pretty much like the animation there, we can actually copy materials and make them single users as well. So again, we'll select this, we'll select the target object, we'll go to Haggis Tools and you can see here, copy material unlinked. And this means we can actually manipulate these materials nice and quickly. So quickly jumping back into animation tools, we'll select both of these objects. We'll go to animation tools and we have calculate object paths. And this just makes it a little bit faster, a little bit easier to be honest. And it'll give you a frame range, we'll hit OK. And you can see here the motion paths. Perfect. We can actually disable these per item so we can go back and we can clear the path on selected. Nice and quick, nice and easy. Now another addition is, let's say for example, we drop in a Bezier curve. We'll just move it to the right here and we'll just give it a little bit of depth. We can now go to Haggis Tools, Convert to Mesh, Keep Original. So what this does is it basically makes it a mesh, but it also keeps the original mesh. Now you can do this natively, this just makes it just a one click quicker to be honest. Now one of my favourite tools that I've actually implemented is called Viewport Hidden Match. So we'll select the cube here and we'll actually hide it in the outliner. And the next time you go to render, the object will be there and you'll be thinking, why didn't I delete this? So what we can do is we can go to Haggis Tools, Viewport hidden match, and if you watch the outliner on the right hand side, you'll notice that it actually disables everything that's hidden. Now this actually works and vice versa, so let's say for example, we have it in the render engine, what we can do is we can go to disable render match, and that'll bring absolutely everything back. Now this is a quick way to kind of match render visibility, and of course you can always come to the outliner here and do something like this, but when you've got thousands of objects, it can get a little bit complicated, but just as another quick tool, I have enable all in viewport and that will actually bring everything back nice and quickly. Perfect. So let's take a look at some of these other tools because the video is getting a little bit long. Set holdout on selected, so we'll select both of these objects and this will actually apply a holdout to the object. So if we actually go down to the object visibility here, you can see that the holdout is now on. Now, just as an added bonus, I've actually brought in a thing called console commands. Now console commands are really important and they're actually beneficial when you have huge data sets, massive data sets. Now I'm going to build these out and add additional commands. So you have a whole list of commands that can help you out. So let's quickly toggle the system console. You can see here. And let's say for example, we want to find out what objects actually have a holdout. We can go to console commands, object has holdout, and it'll actually print a list here. 
So you can see here the Bezier curve is false. The cube is true and the icosphere is true as well. And this is really important when you have massive data sets, massive data sets like thousands of objects. And like I mentioned, I'm going to build these out and make them definitely a lot better. Now another quick tool that I've added here is Active Camera Depth of Field. It drops down an empty and automatically pairs it to the Active Camera. And you can use it as a focus puller. Now I need to make sure that's working correctly. Now another thing that I quickly added was in request of a user, create collection all. So what this essentially does is it creates collection for every kind of add object here. And another quick tool is what we can do is create collection folders. So what this will do is it'll actually write out a folder per collection and all you do is create collection folders and you can see here I've been kind of messing about with that. But it essentially creates a folder per collection name. And this is good for dropping assets and things like this. Don't know if you would use this in production, not entirely sure, but hey, it's there if you need it. So just to quickly wrap everything up, I have a few additional things that I've kind of hidden away from you guys. But we have a toggle gizmos here. So this just saves you going and switching these on and off. And it's good if you want to select, rotate, stuff like this nice and quickly, to be honest. And another quick feature, let's say for example, we jump in a sculpt mode. If you go down to sculpt, we can do an emulate three button mounts and it saves you going into preferences. And this is good if you're jumping from a mouse to a tablet and of course you can quickly flip the face orientation so just as a quick tease another feature that we quickly come in is called command line render what this essentially does is it creates a batch file for your scene files and it means you can do headless render now this will not get released until the price goes up because it's actually quite it's actually pretty good to be honest but anyway that's some of the tools that I've implemented into Haggis tools. There actually is a lot more that we're kind of hidden away to be honest. But anyway, do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, buy the goddamn add-on. Take care.